welcome to our worship. And happy Aldersgate Day. Oh, what's that? What's Aldersgate Day, you ask? Well, it's a celebration that's a little peculiar to us as Methodists. This is the day when we remember our founder, John Wesley, having this heartwarming experience way back in 1738. This is a time when John Wesley, in a moment, all of a sudden realizes and crystallizes his relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let's take this time to write in our journals or to ponder or meditate or pray about just what Jesus means to each and every one of us. Right now, let's head on over to the River Marina in Port St. Lucie and listen to Joyce Grubb and M.J. Montague as they play Blessed Assurance. Here at Trinity, we open our time of prayer by breathing in the breath of life that God breathes into us. Would you breathe with me for a minute? Breathe in the name of the Father. Breathe in the name of the Son. And breathe in the name of the Holy Spirit. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, 
and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Gracious and loving Father, we come before you today like little children, naive and blind in the need of your nurture and love. Mold us into something new that we may overcome the suffering and mess of our lives. Teach us to live a life of peace. O oh Lord, hear our voices. Open our ears that we may accept Jesus Christ into the very depths of our soul, eliminating any lingering doubt, assuring us that we are loved and saved by your grace. May our faith in you, Lord, burn bright. May it be strengthened and challenged by your ever presence in our lives, that we may continually grow closer each and every day. We pray that you look upon us with favor, blessing us with the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may awaken and empower us with God's grace. We pray that the Holy Spirit will ignite a spiritual renewal that will spread like wildfire across the lands, awakening the lost and disenchanted to the message of God's love and his gift of salvation. Lord, thank you for loving us all the days of our lives, from the moment of our birth until we are, take our last breath. You have always been there with open arms, never judging and always forgiving. There is no greater love than yours. Thank you for the lives of Charles and John Wesley and their legacy of Christian service. May we be inspired by their faith and be willing to follow in their footsteps. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. A reading from Paul's Epistle to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. John Wesley's Journal, Wednesday, May 24th, 1738. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. Faith is a work of God in us, which changes us and brings us to birth anew from God. It kills the old Adam, makes us completely different people in heart and mind and senses and all our powers, and brings the Holy Spirit with it. What a living, creative, powerful thing is faith. It is impossible that faith ever stopped doing good. Faith doesn't ask whether good works are to be done, but before it is asked, it has done them. It is always active. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. 
and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Now, I can't say whether the passage that I read from Luther's preface to Paul's epistle to the Romans is, is the one that warmed Wesley's heart, but I really like the idea of faith always being active, faith always at work, transforming our lives, leading us and calling us to live into God's reality. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, and frankly, we don't have the time for it. I mean, for one thing, if you haven't read Paul's epistle to the Romans in its entirety ever or in a long while, you might want to think about doing it. It's the basic outline of Christian thought. It's about 16 chapters long. It should only take you about two or three days. You might want to break it up. But when you read it in its fullness, chances are you're going to see something new. Now, there's one other thing that maybe most folks don't talk about on Aldersgate Day. If you read John Wesley's journal in the days immediately following his heartwarming experience, you'll see that he struggles with the temptations in his life all over again. He doesn't name or describe the temptations, but he sure does describe the struggle. Only this time, Wesley finds himself at peace in the struggle, if that makes any sense at all. Wesley internalizes his salvation in Jesus Christ, and somehow it changes his attitude, his inner approach to the things that tempt him. As Martin Luther writes, Wesley's deepened faith changes the way Wesley lives. I mean, how awesome is that? When we come to God in faith, when we, as the Apostle Paul writes, confess with our lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that He is raised, we will be saved. Our lives will take on a brand new reality. Believe it. But we have to show up. We have to, to read our scripture. We have to take time in prayer. We have to take every chance we have to pray with others and to learn with others and to learn from others. We have to spend time basking in God's love. Let God transform your life. Transform your mind. Transform your heart. Transform your reality. God is so good to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. God brings us to this wonderful new reality when we accept Christ into our lives and follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And so in gratitude for this amazing gift that we have in Jesus, let's pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go, bask in God's presence, and let God change your life. We'll see you next time.